I think with Lonzo, he's come a long way since his Laker days at the beginning of his career. Because when he was involved in that trade package with himself and Brandon Ingram in that trade for AD to the Lakers, there were a lot of people thinking just around in NBA circles that Lonzo's career was in trouble and that he was looking like a potential bust in the NBA. And it was really in part to the fact that he wasn't that good of a shooter. He wasn't the best free throw shooter, but the one thing that kept him in the league was his ability to facilitate in his overall court vision. Those were some aspects to his game that a lot of people respected and liked from him. Since he's gotten to the Pelicans though, you can tell that he has taken several steps as far as his overall progression and overall improvement as a player in the NBA. Let's just talk about his ability to shoot. He is no longer doing that 45 degree angle shot that he had when he was with the Lakers and even in his UCLA days. That diagonal looking shot is done in a way with and it's for the better because when I look at him this year in particular, I see a lot more confidence in his ability to shoot better. When you look at his shooting stats this year, he's shooting his best career high in overall shooting percentage. He's shooting 42% from the field and he's almost shooting 40% from behind the three-point line this year. If you go back to his rookie year, he was only shooting 36% from the field, and he was only shooting 30% behind the three-point line. So he's definitely taken some great steps to improve his game as far as shooting goes. Now, when it comes to his, his assist, his assist numbers are down this year, but I attribute that to his overall ability of having more confidence in his shot. And I want to take it one step further. When you look at his overall potential as an NBA player, he's gone from a potential NBA bust to, I think, a great mid-level player. I don't think that he has the chance to become a superstar in this league. I don't know if he really possesses those tangible assets to be a superstar in this league. But from where he was a couple of years ago to where he is now, he is definitely a solid mid-level player. And he has a very good chance to become an above average player in just a couple of years. And I think his best chance for success is to stay with New Orleans. I know that he was involved in some trade rumors this year. And none of those trades actually manifested in him being moved. And I think actually that's probably going to be for the better of his career. I think if they're able to keep Lonzo with the Pelicans and keep him together with Brandon Ingram, and Zion Williamson. I really think that Lonzo's career could be a solid one moving forward. And I think the Pelicans, their best chance to win a lot of games in the future is going to be dependent on how Lonzo Ball continues to progress as his career goes on. And just look at where he was from a couple of years ago. I mean, a couple years ago, he, he was very skinny out on the court. Granted, he's like 6'5", 6'6". He's a big guy. He's a tall guy. But when you look at him now, I'm just talking about from a physical stature standpoint, he is a much more – he's just a bigger player now. He looks like a stronger player. He kind of fits that mold of a prototypical basketball player now. It looks like he's definitely been in the league for a couple years now, and he's come a long way since the beginning – stages of his career when he was with the Lakers. So I think he can keep progress. If he can keep progressing at this rate, I think the Pelicans could be a decent team moving forward in the Western conference. I don't know if it's going to be this year. I think it's probably going to be a couple years down the road, but the Pelicans standing in the Western conference is going to be determined by how well Lonzo can keep progressing as a player. And if the chemistry between him, Brandon Ingram, and Zion continues to grow in the way that it has so far, yeah, I could really see the Pelicans being a pretty good team in just a couple of years in the Western Conference. But with Lonzo, he's doing a great job so far. And this year, he's definitely starting to show some great results from where he was just a couple of years ago. So, I mean, right off the bat, um, him at UCLA, great to watch. I mean, between the vision, 
the clutch gene that he had in the NCAA tournament, um, his vertical, just pretty, pretty much everything. He was for sure a top three pick coming out of college. And we all knew that he was more than likely going to the Lakers at the time because I, who was the first overall pick in that draft? It was Ben Simmons, right? No. Yes. I believe it was Ben. Simmons. Was it Ben? I believe it was Ben. So, like, we, we, we knew the situation that was coming out of it, and uh, we felt that, not we, but people or fans, should I say, felt that it was a great fit. Tutelage under Magic Johnson, young team. You know, uh, Brandon Ingram was drafted the year prior, so it was just like they felt that they were building a very young nucleus over there in L.A., mm -hmm. and it just didn't turn out that way. You know, the, 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 uh, the summer league where Kuzma came into his own and they, they had that nice duo where they won the NBA summer league championship. Everybody thought Lonzo was poised to have an amazing NBA career and it didn't pan out that way. Lonzo had some early injuries, his inability to shoot, uh, his inability to shoot free throws. So, I mean, you, you name it, Lonzo had it. It just, it, it wasn't working for him. Lonzo averaged 10 points his rookie season alongside uh, I think it was six rebounds and seven or seven rebounds and seven assists. Um, great numbers. But again, Lonzo did get hurt in that year. So Lonzo did miss some games. Uh, the following season was the year that LeBron James got into uh, LA. No, LeBron came in 2019. I forget. It was 2018. He played it's one year with LeBron. 2018 yeah. into yeah, 2019. So, so the next year, LeBron was there um, and his load again did decrease. Uh, so he went from 10 points to nine points, from seven assists to four assists, from seven rebounds to five rebounds. So he did take a step back. And it, it just seemed that Lonzo was getting worse and worse and worse over time because of his, again, lack of confidence and inability to, sh inability to shoot. Overall in his career, he is a 54% free throw shooter. And at the time, he was under a 40%, you know, uh, a 40% field goal percentage shooter. So it just, it didn't look good for him on the offensive end. But Lonzo kept cracking. Lonzo kept working. And everybody knows that Lonzo is a lengthy guard who is very good at defending on the ball. And he is a great rebounding guard with phenomenal vision. I would go as far as to say myself that he is probably one of the better pure passers in the NBA in terms of for his age. I mean, we're talking about young, phenomenal court vision players that, have the ability to just either pass somebody open or just find that open man, him and Luka Doncic and so many others. So, I mean, uh, I give Lonzo Ball a lot of credit. I was kind of leaning toward that bust situation if this season wouldn't have panned out because he just did not seem to be performing as well as his classmates. Um, it is a hard act to follow up with. Are you sure it was Ben Simmons? I don't think it was Ben. I think it was Markel Fultz. That's who it was. Oh, good call. That's so, good call. Uh, so. So uh, never mind with Markel. He didn't pan out of Philly at all. He started coming into his own in Orlando recently. And, he, you know, the tail, tail, tail end of Philly. But, I mean, when you have Jason Tatum right behind you, immediately impacting the Boston Celtics, and you're kind of sitting there shit in the bed, so to speak. It's really hard. And then, obviously, when, when Braun got there, the entire situation became we want Anthony Davis. And Braun did not give a shit who he had to ship out. He kind of just sent the world over because he wanted that one player, as me and Kyle have discussed, the LeBron effect. Um, but again, back to Lonzo Ball, I believe that this season he's made tremendous strides. He's averaging 14 and a half points. Again, you know, the rebounding total has gone down when you have Zion Williams, Zion Williamson and Steven Adams down low, two very, very big paint presences down there. He's only averaging 5.6 assists, but the percentages that needed to be increased have gone up. He's shooting 42.6% from the field in general. He's shooting 39% from behind the arc. And he's shooting 78% from the free throw line this season, which just is absolutely incredible from where he was. And, uh, you know, he's got a great team around him. New Orleans isn't a threat as of right now, but they have such a young nucleus, a, a young core with Brandon Ingram, Zion, and, and Lonzo. I think if that, that, that trio is kind of kept together, they're, they're definitely poised to make some noise in the West. I don't know about massive playoff pushes, but... Uh, with Lonzo being on the trading block this offseason, or should I say this midseason, I really thought he would have gotten moved. And I'm actually happy that he didn't because I think that New Orleans fits what he needs. Zion's a great athletic big to kind of you know run the pick and roll, throw the alley-oop to. Uh, B.I. is a great person to, you know, pass wide open, can knock down open shots, also create his own shots. And they just play well together. So, you know, I think Lonzo finally found a happy home, and I hope that they keep him there. And if he keeps this up, I don't see why he can't 
be a consistent role player in the NBA.